Hey, hey, this is your best podcast where you're going to discover ways to live and have your best. And it's hosted by me, T. Marie, your best life coach. My clients have breakthroughs in their life, their health, their business, and their spirituality. <laughs> and today I have someone that is extremely special to me and is going to be extremely special to you. His name is Tony Jacobson, and he's my husband, and I love him. But get this, that's not why he's on the show. He's on the show because he's an author, he's a fitness coach, he's a DJ, and he helps people to get and to stay healthy despite whatever limitations they have. Not only that, he has a second book coming out. It's called Advice to Be Unbreakable. So definitely, you want to get to know the one and only... Tony Jacobson. Yay! Hey, y'all. I'm on the show. I'm on the show. I'm on the show. Let's go. Let's go. I'm on the show. <laughs> Tony, please kick it off with just sharing your website so we can get okay. info right out. Yeah. What up, everybody? Uh, my website is, it's very easy to remember. It's my name, TonyJacobson.com. <laughs> T-O-N-Y-J-A-C-O-B-S-E-N. Dot com that's jacobson with an e so tony jacobson.com yeah oh yeah oh yeah now we're gonna kick things off okay because look here at your best podcast okay <laughs> doing a new kids dance come on <laughs> here at your best podcast we're gonna dive into like i said before you know ways to discover our best right but it's not just all gonna be boring right? It's going to be fun. And we're going to kick this off with a game. So your episode in particular, this is all going to be about power of positivity, power right. of positivity. So we're going to kick this off with a game. Are you ready? Here's I'm ready. The game. I'm going to say a number of things and you're going to let us know, is this being positive or is this being psycho? I don't know. Positive that's a, or psycho? That's a positive big swing in the, in the pendulum. Okay. Positive or psycho. Got it. Okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. Okay. So first thing. Yeah. <laughs> a person that is wide tooth smiling. Positive <laughs> or psycho? Uh, oh, um, <laughs> I guess it would depend on what they say next. <laughs> what they say next. Uh, what words come out glance, of the mouth next. When you at first, first glance at someone. I will take it as positivity at first. And then I'll hear what they say. And then we're going to decide after that. <laughs> Yay. I like that. I like that answer. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Next one. Circus clowns. Positive or psycho? Ooh. I actually like clowns, so I'm going to say positive. Really? Okay. Yeah. Okay. This is good. This is good. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, and again, are they holding a red balloon or are they, <laughs> you know, by themselves? <laughs> well, you know, that's the thing. Look, everything we can dive deeper, right? But this yeah. is about what is your first instinct? Because yeah. you okay. know, right? You know. Yeah. Okay. Positive then. Positive. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And this may seem, this next one, I might... <laughs> We'll, we'll see. Looking at the silver lining for everything, positive or psycho? I say positive. I absolutely absolutely say positive. A lot of people disagree with me, but uh, I will say positive. All right. All right. All right. Woohoo! <laughs> okay. And then this last one. Listening to Christmas music when it's not Christmas time. Positive or psycho? Psycho. <laughs> I crushed. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I'm just playing. I'm playing. That's a joke. That's a joke. I think that that is positive. I think Christmas music is great year round. And if it does happen to, you know, not as long as it's not like just on repeat, I don't know. That's a fine line. That's a fine line. Again, it depends on who you are and what your intentions are with Christmas, but 
yeah, I would say at first glance, that's a that's a psycho. <laughs> <laughs> See, I love this. I love this because we all yeah. have different feelings, right? Absolutely, we all have different yeah. feelings about what positive is, or if that's just ooh, that's too much. That's yeah. psycho. That's extra. <laughs> so okay, okay, this is good. Yeah. So you're here to talk about the power of positivity because you have a a lifelong journey with this, yeah. okay? Yeah. Your experience with be, with positivity and being unbreakable, it really started when you were a kid. Now, I know mm -hmm. this is kind of open-ended, but I didn't want to pre-phrase it. And you know well that we are, you know, looking at timing here, but your, your origin story, so <laughs> your birth story, right. your young adult story, it's really special. It's the reason you're unbreakable. It's the reason you share the power of positivity. Please briefly put it, bring us up to speed. Okay, well, I was born with a rare bone condition. It's called osteogenesis imperfecta. It's also known as OI. That's easier to say and remember. And it's brittle bones. So I was born with this condition and uh, that, you know, from the get, from the get, it was all about, um, you know, going through life with hardships because I was breaking bones from, you know, I started breaking when I was like just over one year old and uh, I started breaking bones, uh, you know, all through my childhood. And so I was faced with the challenge of trying to understand what positivity meant. You know, what does that mean? Because really it through those years it was always a challenge and always difficult for me and my family and everybody involved in my life so it was very much about uh learning how to stay positive through negative situations because breaking bones you know let's face it it's never really a positive situation so uh, i was breaking frequently in fact throughout my life i've broken about 70 ish times let's say 75 that that makes it a good round number uh wow. 70 75 mm -hmm. and so i've broken tons of bones um you know i used to use a wheelchair when i was a kid and then i started walking on crutches when i got a little stronger in my teens and then i started walking on my own with without anything unassisted when i was in my early 20s when i was 24 years old so uh, all through that time it was very much about like i said trying to not stay in a negative mindset, uh, to really find positivity where I could. And, uh, you know, just understand like, how do I even cultivate positivity within me? Uh, you know, I wasn't necessarily surrounded by the most positive people. Uh, I love the people that were around me during those times, but I wasn't necessarily surrounded by positivity. So it was up to me to figure it out, to figure out how to stay positive, how to look at the bright side of things and, uh, you know, remain happy. Cause you know, that's what the goal is for all of us is to be happy in life and sure. to succeed and to have fulfillment. So that was, uh, that's the origin story of like my early years, really trying to, uh, learn how to be positive. And um, that led to being unbreakable. Yes. And that, see, I'm glad because it goes right into the next question that I'm going to ask you that I know is going to be really powerful. So here you are, you're a kid, you're breaking your bones a lot, which means, you know, it's not a quick fix. You're laying in bed, which then also means you're probably isolated a lot of the time. You're having this experience that is compounded by a situation that occurs. You break a bone, yeah. but then all these other things are happening. So- yeah. How did positivity help you? There are people out there who they have, you know, they they feel and they are, for the moment, they are trapped by their limitations. So how did that positivity help you when you felt trapped by the limitations you were experiencing as a kid? Well, the positivity helped me to not only get through the situation uh, with less pain, right, with less trauma, but uh, it helped me at times get through it faster. So yes, my bones would only heal, <laughs> right? My bones would heal as fast as they would heal. We all know uh, for a normal person when they break their bones, it's probably about four to six weeks to a heal time. Mine, because of my OI is about eight to 12 weeks depending on the fracture. So, you know, yeah, there was a lot of time laid up, a lot of time in casts, a lot of time being immobile and not being able to get around at all. Uh, having pain, like literal physical pain, but staying positive helped me to continue life beyond it. So still staying positive, finding ways to move, finding ways to, um, you know, find happiness in other things, take my mind 
mind off of the negative aspects of it. Um, the positivity really helped me in those times and uh, continues to help me to this day. Now, and, and I've worked on it. I've worked on it. It wasn't easy when I was younger, but I have worked on it and kind of perfected the uh, looking at the silver lining all the time, right? Yeah. So it is a process, but um, that really did help me to get through it easier, especially with, again, any negativity that comes from the outside world. Because whenever we're injured, whenever we have a disability, whenever we're we go through something like that. Society has a certain perspective on it. And so we have to deal with that. You know, as the individual that's actually experiencing the thing, we have to deal with all the outside stuff. So a positivity helped me deal with that too. Mm -hmm. And I know your story intimately, um, yeah. obviously, but you know, when it, and, and you talked a little bit, a little bit about it. So when you, you know, um, you went from wheelchair to crutches, then from crutches to finally walking unassisted, now this is happening though, as you're in your later teens, as you're in your young adult life. So, you know, now we're talking about physical changes and you also underwent a physical transformation that was huge. Mm -hmm. So throughout these physical transformations, so there's one where you're feeling trapped by your limitations because circumstantially things are happening and you just, you know, but then there are physical things that are happening. How does that positivity help you? How did it help you and how can it help others as they're experiencing these physical things? How does positivity help? How, you know, how did it help you make those changes? Yeah, through the early years, um, I think the physical changes almost happened, you know, I always had in my mind that I was going to say they almost happened naturally because I think I always had in my mind that I wanted something better for myself as far as physical movement was concerned. I always felt like I, you know, deep down inside I could and wanted to do more. So I think naturally growing up and as a as a child and then when you're a kid, you don't really think about, you know, self-help, personal development. You don't think about those things. So I think naturally um, my positivity help those things to occur. Like, where it's like, okay, I got out of the wheelchair and started walking. And then I started, okay, I, I want to walk without the crutches. These were thoughts in my mind that weren't really like, um, specific things that I knew I was going to do, but they just happened naturally. After my, after I started walking, um, you know, I, I didn't do anything physically because I was scared of breaking bones. So I spent like my twenties and thirties being not physical and uh, still staying positive, but not really focusing on my disability at all, because I was like, just kind of in the back of my mind, living it, dealing with all of it, dealing with the consequences of it. I wasn't breaking as much, but still I couldn't really walk too well. Uh, I couldn't do things physically because I started to gain a lot of weight through those years. And uh, again, I was just afraid of breaking. So even though I was being positive, like in other aspects of my life, I wasn't very positive when it came to my disability. Then finally, like a huge health scare. And I, do you want me to talk about that now? Yeah, of course. Okay. So, yeah. I, I had a huge health scare, um, you know, when I was getting to my 40s. You know, you were there, yeah. um, but the audience doesn't. And so this health scare, uh, you know, having to do with my heart, um, you know, I thought I was told that I might have had a small heart attack. And that was kind of the breaking point for me. No actual pun intended. Uh, so that was the breaking <laughs> point for me. And I knew I had to do something to, you know, get healthier and really take that positivity that I was living in other aspects of my life and apply it to my disability at this point mm -hmm. where it's like, okay, well, how can I change this for the better? How can I, you know, uh, have a positive mindset around my disability? Because I never had, it was always a negative mindset around my disability. Sure. Every single thought that I had a bit about my disability up to that point was negative. It was always a hardship, always something I was afraid of, always something having to deal with, something like that. And so at that point in my life, when I was 42, it was like, really, how do I take my positivity and inject it into my disability life? Because it was a part of me and uh, really make a change. So once, once I was able to do that, took me a little bit, mm -hmm. but I was able to do it, go through a huge physical transformation. I started doing things physically that I never thought possible. I, I burned a bunch of weight off. I, I got stronger, right? <laughs> I got mm -hmm. stronger and, uh, you know, I started doing things. I started jumping. I started uh, running. Running was a huge um, goal that I had in mind when I first started my physical transformation. And so uh, that positivity, so at that point, I was 
strong enough in positivity that I could make that shift happen faster. So it was really only about an eight to nine month transformation at that point. So I exponentially was able to use that positivity to make a huge drastic change in my life and become healthier than I had ever been. I love that. Woo-hoo! Yes. <laughs> I seriously Woo-hoo! love that, you know, because it is true and it, the power of our thinking dictates so much in our life and being able to be positive. That's why we played the game at first, right? Sometimes feeling positive does feel a little psycho. It does feel (laughs) a little weird because you're like, wait, but there's all these real things happening. But as you're sharing here in your very personal story, listen, positivity helps you when you were in, uh, in a bed laid up away from, you know, friends, uh, family, just kind of alone. And you got to keep yourself, your spirits high. Then you fast forward as you're a, uh, a young adult and you're finding that you need to make some changes and break through some very, uh, justified real thinking. Um, and you have to be positive and look at things a different way. Uh, you've even, you know, you've done a lot of things. You're a DJ, you're a fitness coach, you're an author, right? So I'm sure mm-hmm. Positivity has helped you to push forth in these new projects. Tell us a little bit about that because maybe as an adult, right? What what about that adult that's sitting there that maybe they, they haven't had those experiences that you have shared about um, with your physical transformation or with the disability that you experience, which I still feel is, is, is very relatable because we all have times we, we feel we're alone. But mm-hmm. for an adult that wants to do something totally new, wants to all of a sudden be an author, wants to all of a sudden do something new in their career, how can positivity help them? Well, if you are struggling or, I don't like to say struggling, I like like to say challenging or challenged. If you are challenged right now and you are feeling stuck, if you are feeling like you want to make a change, you need to make a change in your life and you just don't know how to do it, tapping into some positivity can be a great first step because it will start to unlock some things in your life. So number one, it's going to unlock even your willingness to make a change right because you if you're thinking negatively about that next step if you think about and usually it's not the next step that's negative but it's the process to get there that you mm-hmm. think is negative right um you think you can't do it you think that others won't accept you you think that it's too difficult etc those are the negative thoughts that you have so just starting to have a positive outlook on things will be Uh, will spark that change and will help to make that change happen because then things will start to come into alignment. You'll start to, you know, you'll be willing to change, number one. You'll start to attract the right people around you. Once you start talking positively, you'll start to attract the right people around you that'll support you. And, uh, And then also you'll be able to go into these changes and these things that you might wanna do with more happiness and joy you'll just go into it with more of a you know like a positive with the positive outlook it helps you be happier about it Mm -hmm. so uh you know it won't be such a challenge um you know i have a a a great chapter in my book that's that talks about you know does it have to be hard and so that's a that's a good question that you'll ask yourself once you start to be positive um you will see things differently and you'll start to act differently and that's uh, that's how you can make that change and and become the you know, unbreakable person that you want to be. Yes, yes. And it's so funny because you were, I was just about to talk about this. We're moving this for a second. <laughs> we're talking about <laughs> advice to be unbreakable. Hey! In the second book. hey! I was Look just about to ask you because you have a new book. We've been talking about, yeah. What's up? Yes. With the, You have a new book, okay? We've been talking about positivity. We've been talking about why this helps us, how this helps us. You have a brand new book. It is called Advice to Be Unbreakable. Please tell us about it. This is it right here, y'all. This is it, (laughs) Advice to Be Unbreakable. This is your guide to overcoming challenges, embracing uniqueness, and cultivating a mindset of resilience and positivity. It's right there in the subtitle, and that's what this book is all about. This is really, you know, everything that I've learned along the way about 
overcoming challenges and uh, really cultivating that resilience and, and positivity and embracing uniqueness, embracing my uniqueness, because we all need to do that in order to get through challenges that we have in life. So I'm so excited for the book. Um, you know, it's 40 chapters. I like to say it's 40 chapters of easily digestible advice that is a fun read. It's going to be fun for you to read it. And um, it really is, you know, I give you some straight up practical advice on what to do to overcome challenges in life. So whether that is trying to find negative or um, trying to overcome negativity in your life to stay positive, whether that's you're having challenges in relationships and finding people to support you, whether it's just being challenged in your daily activities in life and being productive, uh, because that's a, a big deal. When you're productive and you're efficient and you're able to do things in life easier, then you will be overcoming challenges and you will cultivate resilience and positivity in your life. Life. So uh, that's what this book is about, and I'm so excited to get it out to the world. So yes, it is very that's, exciting. That's <laughs> yes, indeed, a live woohoo for that because seriously, I got yeah, I got <laughs> to be, um, you know, a beta reader of your book. I still mm -hmm. pre-ordered my copy. That's how good it Thank is. Thank you, absolutely, Thank you. <laughs> and that's how good it is. You know, um, and you know me. You know me as your wife, and I do love you very much. And yet, I also wouldn't lie. I wouldn't be like, it's good. Uh, it wasn't this is good. the truth, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> she will tell me the truth. Here's that smile. <laughs> I would be like, uh, honey, uh, <laughs> you know. So I loved that when I was reading the book. What I loved is that it really felt very conversational. It felt fun. I found myself wanting to continue to read. I like to read at night, right before bed to our listeners. Um, and so sometimes, you know, I'm like, I'm just gonna read a little chapter and then go to bed because I maybe don't wanna stay up. And I, I felt like I wanted to continue reading. So I appreciated that very much. And I also really loved when I read your book that the next day I would remember the stories and they would, bring positivity into my life or they would encourage me. And I know that it's going to have that same impact. So it's very exciting. You know, you really did a great job with this book because it is exactly what you say it is. It is digestible, it's conversational, but it's also really empowering um, advice to be unbreakable. So it's, it's excellent. Now, who would you say advice to be unbreakable is for? Well, the book is very much for anybody that's feeling challenged in life. Like anybody that's feeling like you're stuck, you know, you you just, you know, maybe don't know what to do in a situation. You you feel you need something different in life, but you're not sure how to get it going, how to start to uh, you know, maybe you're feeling very negative and you want to start to feel positive. You want to start to figure out how to even think positively. Uh, you know, uh, like I said, it covers kind of all different aspects of life too. So relationships, your health, uh, your daily productivity, uh, your mindset is all through the book. It's all, it all, it's all connected to mindset, but it really is, um, you know, for anybody that's feeling like they, you know, that they have been broken, right? And they want to be unbreakable because being unbreakable isn't about not breaking. It's about like redefining yourself after you have a broken moment. So, uh, you know, we're all going to break. We all going to break, but yes. you know, the minute we break is the minute we start healing and that's, and that's fine. And, that, and that's the most important time because that's how we become unbreakable uh, through those moments. And that's how we build resilience. So yeah, it's really for anybody who wants a, who wants some encouragement, who wants a pick me up, who needs a shot in the arm of positivity and, uh, and encouragement. That's who it's for. Yes. I love that. And I love that you highlight that we're all going to have those moments where we feel broken in some way, where we're all going to have those moments where we feel negative in some way as the best life coach. That's why I help my clients. And I even go through it myself. It's a continual experience and not continual meaning like, oh, you know, we got to keep no, it's a continual because we're alive. Because when yeah. we finally reach that new summit, right, then we see another one. So then yeah. as we're on the way to the another one, we're gonna be like, oh, well, maybe this is hard today. Or maybe I feel negative today. So it's great to access these tools. Um, you know, I was gonna ask what you what being unbreakable means to you. You kind of answered it, but just to really yeah. kind of give a person a nice capsule, 
What does being unbreakable mean to you? Yeah, being unbreakable to me, to me means um, being unbreakable to me means that we are strong enough to get through our broken moments and build a new sense of resilience and positivity within ourselves so that maybe we're not going to break in that same way again in the future because we are all about making ourselves better. We're all a work in progress and there's always a continuous path to being unbreakable. You get, you don't ever really become fully unbreakable because there are going to be times where you're going to be challenged, but being unbreakable means that in those moments of challenge, you know how to handle it better. You know how to come through it faster and you know how to remain positive through it. So being unbreakable, it's multidimensional. There are many facets to it, but you know, just know that it's about having strength and understanding your resilience, your positivity, uh, your uniqueness and, and you know, what you're supposed to be doing here for the world. That's so good. That is so good and so true. Now, let's say someone is feeling, you know, I'll just share for me on my own personal growth, personal development, just achieving new goals. And then also as a coach, you know, it is a process, right? What do you say to two twofold question? How important has getting help been for you? Have you gotten help to do this? And then the second part of the question is, what would you say to someone who right now might be wondering about the value of these types of things, um, or maybe might be disheartened around the potency of engaging in these types of things on their own personal journey? Take it away. Yeah, I think, first of all, I did get I did get help and I continue to get help. So you've been a good help and a coach as my wife and as just a, a coach that's been further along on the self-development, the personal growth journey. You've been ahead of me in certain aspects. So you've been a great coach to me. That's number one. And then, uh, like when it came to my physical transformation, I literally hired a certified personal trainer, <laughs> right? So I heard, I hired a coach for that because it was so important to get someone that knew what they were doing. That's why I became a certified personal trainer because I wanted to help others, but I wanted to really be that step above and beyond so that I could help people easier. Yes. Uh, so I definitely have had help. I've spent money on coaching. I think it's important. A lot of people, so here's the thing. A lot of people are weary of it because number one, it is going to cost money. You're going to have to spend money on coaching. That's just how it is. Like if you really want to make a change, um, you're going to have to spend money. You can go through the route of trying to figure it out yourself. And I talk about that in my first book, Disable Your Disability. I talk about the gap is what I like to call it. And it's that time between, you know, you say, I want to make a change. And then the time that you actually start making a change, mm -hmm. this whole time can vary for people. Mm. And for a lot of people, the gap is huge. Like sometimes they don't even get through the gap because mm -hmm. they're having a lot of things built up in their minds about getting help. So getting help, I talk a lot about getting help in my book, Advice to Be Unbreakable how to do it, why it's important. You know, I talk about the mindset behind it, why we struggle with asking for help. Mm -hmm. um, that's an important thing. And then really like how to ask for help, where to find it and uh, really bring it into your life. So it is a two-parter. It's very much like figuring out, you know, why don't I ask for help? Um, it, that's a big question and, uh, I help you get through that. And then also, you know, how do I find help? Because a lot of people just don't know how to do it. So, Absolutely. There's a lot of mindset stuff when it comes to getting help, um, you know, that especially someone that's going through challenges, uh, like for myself with a disability, if you have a disability, there's this whole mindset of, I, I want to show people I can do it on my own and show and improve in. And I know that's for everybody, re regardless of disability or, or limitation or whatever. Yes. People go through that, right? So um, the, a lot of pride is involved and in letting go of that and understanding there's actually strength in asking for help. I had There's, to come through that. Yep. There's I had power to come in it. through that. There's power in that. I had right. to come through that. And I and I want to definitely speak to that point. So I personally had to grow into uh realizing that asking for help is a power move. Okay. Right. Woohoo! 
mother F and woohoo on that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> because asking right. for help, there's a lot of pride sometimes around doing everything yourself. But what I tell my clients, people that are thinking about this and what I tell, you know, folks that engage with me, maybe through social media, when we bridge this topic is that it is very risky. It is very risky. You are gambling so much when you are trying to make big life changes and do it all by yourself. Because just yeah. like Tony described, when you're in that gap, many times there are so many things coming at us mentally, emotionally, physically, there are deep habits we don't even recognize yet. And we may not even make it through the gap and we may lose, lose it all because we tried to go through it ourselves. And then you also yeah. mentioned, which I also second, there's a great value in getting help because let's say, hey, or let's let's enjoy the fact it can be easier. It can be faster. <laughs> yep. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. So yeah, you're hitting it all. You're hitting it all easier, and something. E yeah. yeah. Easier and faster is is the name of the game, especially, you know, uh, we always think when we're younger that we that we have just time on our hands, but that's not not necessarily the case. Like just get it done. Right. You just want to get it done, whatever it is. You want to make that positive change and you want to just do it quickly and, and make it happen. But the best uh, way I like to describe it is like when you try and like work out on your own and you're going through the process of trying to get fit, get healthier, etc. Um, what happens most of the times when you're trying to learn it on your own, you injure yourself mm -hmm. or you burn yourself out and you don't continue. Now, these are things that literally a coach can help you with, a trainer can help you with so that those things don't occur, so that you don't hit those roadblocks and you face those challenges uh, of burnout or injuring yourself. You, you won't have that happen when you have a good trainer and that's well worth every single penny you might spend on a trainer. So just something like that, you know, someone that's already been there, someone that understands and can, uh, you know, get the right route for you the fastest, that's so important. Mm-hmm. Man, this has been jam packed. We have gone through so many wonderful facets of positivity, ways you can get help, your wonderful book, Advice to Be Unbreakable, and how it could easily help people at their fingertips. And it's brand new, it's brand new, yeah. and it's available. So definitely you want to get on that. Now, Tony, tell us what is the best way for people to connect with you? You mentioned it at the top, but please let them know how do they connect with you yeah please come to my website my website is the way to do it everything is there to help you be unbreakable so go to tonyjacobson.com it's t-o-n-y-j-a-c-o-b-s-e-n jacobson with an e tonyjacobson.com you can also go to advice to be unbreakable.com if you want to get straight to the book you can find out about my books. You can find out about my coaching. You can find out about all of the awesome things that are going on in the world of Unbreakable. So that's where you go, TonyJacobson.com. <laughs> I have to say, I was fighting the urge to not look like a psycho and just sit here smiling, but I'm so proud of you. <laughs> I'm so, I'm so proud. Let's do it. Let's do it. Hey. I'm like, yeah, because <laughs> it just makes me so happy. Um, thank you so much for being here with us on Your Best Podcast. Friends, know that um, you will be able to uh, subscribe. You will be able to easily click through in the show note descriptions. So if you missed, if you're just listening, and if you missed the website, don't you worry, just visit uh, and subscribe and just click through because we're going to have all the resources uh, in our show description notes for you to do all of those things to connect with me, T. Marie, your best life coach, to connect with your best podcast and subscribe and to connect with Tony Jacobson. I'm going to start calling you Mr. Unbreakable. Hey, that's just it. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, at TonyJacobson.com. Thank you so much for being here with us today. And uh, hey, should we just tell them to have an unbreakable day? I think yeah, that sounds have good. an unbreakable day. And before we go, just congratulations on your podcast and the launch of this awesome platform to share everything you've got going on because you are a powerhouse and you're bringing some great guests. And I can't wait to listen to the other episodes that you've got going on because I know... I got the back, I got the uh, inside track, y'all, on who's going to be on this show. So you <laughs> definitely want to come and listen to these episodes. I'm so proud of you for making this happen.
Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Yeah, I'm really excited because, you know, we are going to be having fun ha like we like we did right now and speaking to great people and just sharing all the ways. You know, that's one thing that's been important to me. I've been doing this for over 25 years and I strongly believe that everybody can and should have access. I also developed a method to make sure that we can have transformation made easy through joy. And so this is yet another way that we can do that. And we're going to have a great ton of fun and you are going to definitely come back. So that's just, that's just a little bit of, of what's going to, what's going to happen. Let's you do, do it. it. <laughs> I dig. <laughs> All I know right. the listeners and the viewers are digging too. Let's go. Yeah. All right. So y'all have an unbreakable day and definitely subscribe to your best podcast. I'm T. Marie. This is Tony Jacobson and we're out. Bye. Bye everyone. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Be sure to subscribe and visit tmarie.com slash free for more goodness. Woohoo!